Hey guys, it's the Full Cards here. Love and Rick Montreal, Quebec, and I thought I would do something different today. I thought I'd do my top 10 sets pre-1961 for fun under the sun, although it's not really sunny today. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd do that. So it'd all be sets that I would own, not ones I don't own. At least I own a few cards or lots from that or the entire sets. I'm pretty limited because I have a lot of cards in New York, so I'm just going by stuff I have in Montreal. And in the future, I'll do above and beyond that. I'll do the 60s and the 70s and so on. But I'll run this one up to about 60, 61 because I love that 61 set. So uh, first, a couple of honorable mentions. First and foremost, honorable mentions of cards I do not have. I do not have the 1954-55 set. Uh, and that set includes a beautiful Gordy Howe, a beautiful Terry Sawchuk, Gump Worsley Del Delvecchio. Uh, so I thought I'd mention that. That's the white one with the blue and with the red. And what I'll also do in mentioning this stuff is also mention sort of the top number one card within each set in terms of value. Yeah, I'm gonna speak a bit about value today just because it's kind of interesting. So the Gordie Howe of the 1954-55 set, which I would love to show you guys, but I don't own it. Uh, I think the Mint 9 is valued at $25,000. <laughs> so that would be the card from that particular set. Uh, I think of note, so there's some Pronovos, uh, Camille Henry's rookie card, uh, there's some good cards in that set, but I just mentioned that set because I think it's one of the most beautiful ones you could ever get. I think Doug Moans' is rookie cards in that one as well. And the second one I mentioned, uh, which I don't own, which I'd love to show you, but I don't have it because I don't own it, is the 1936-1937 OPT V Series one. There's a Howie Morenz in there, there's a Turk Broda in there, there's a King Clancy in there, and there's an Aurel Joliat. It is a beautiful one, and you might recognize it and know it because it's the pop-up series. And I think P Parker's reprinted that pop-up series, and I do own the reprints of that pop-up series. Uh, but there is a Turk Broda rookie card, what's considered a Turk Broda rookie card, uh, within that set. So that is a really, really, really cool one that I thought I'd just mention in passing as well. All right, guys. So number 10 would be the 1958-59 Tops set, which of course would be the rookie card of Bobby Hall card number 66. That card, a mint nine, is valued at, I think, $175,000, which is complete insanity. Uh, for a while, I did see real cheap ones uh, available for, for 200, but I'm sure they go over 1,000 or 1,500 now. I can only imagine what a PSA one would be valued. But what's so cool about this set is it does have the Glenn Hall, uh, it does have a Gordy Howe, it does have a um, Terry Sawchuk. I think the Terry Sawchuk is up here. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's the Gordy Howe. Uh, really, really cool, super duper set. All right, number nine. Number nine, uh, let's just call it a tie between the 5758 Tops and the 5758 Parkers. Uh, the benefit of the Tops is that you have the Glenn Hall rookie card, you have the Johnny Busick rookie card. The Busick is probably valued at about 6,000 for a mint nine. The Glenn Hall is a lot more nominal, usually about to, goes for about 2,500 for a mint nine. Uh, there's also Pierre Pilot's rookie card. So the Glen Hall would actually be a rookie card. This is my most beaten up set of all my sets. It's really, really sort of destroyed, uh, but I love it. And there is the Terry Sawchuk. There is the Alex Del Vecchio. Some really, really good cards in here, but I'd say the Busick and the Gordy Howe would probably be the two most valuable cards uh, in this set. So here's a 1957-58 Parker set, another one of my favorite sets. This one again is in rod and condition, although I think I have a duplicate of this set. This is just the bad set here in Montreal. A second year card, so to speak, of the Jack Plante, although there was a missing year of cards the year before his rookie was 55, 56. Uh, the rookie card in this set would be the Frank Mahovlich and the Henri Richard. I think the Henri Richard is probably the one worth the most at $7,500 for a mint nine. Although these prices are probably all over the place now. So I'm just going based on PSA's last guidance on that. Uh, very cool. And number eight, number eight would be the 1940-41 OPG. Those are the oversized cards. I do have a couple of them in New York. I don't have any here, unfortunately. Uh, but the key cards from that set, I'm not really sure about the value, but the key cards from that set would be the Turk Broda, that one where he's sprawling with his pads, the Milt Schmidt, the, the um, other Turk Broda. There's a second Turk Broda, which is just sort of a portrait and the Toe Blake and the Max Bentley. Uh, I like the Toe Blake from that set and I have that card and it's one of my favorite sets. 
So number seven, number seven would be the 6162 Parker set. You might recall this look from the retros from the 2015-16 rookie year of McDavid in the OPG format. Uh, very cool set. They have the Gordie Howe, the Dave Keon, the Jacques Plant, the Tim Horton, Terry Sawchuk. All that stuff is within this set. Really, really cool. It's one of the few sets of the early Parkers where they actually mix and match American teams and Canadian teams because they kept them separate. One was Tops and one was Parkers, but in this set, they're all mixed up, the Americans and the Canadian teams. Uh, and there is the Gordie Howe, very, very cool. I think the most expensive card in this set would be the Dave Keon rookie card. Uh, another cool thing about it is out on the back of it, you see uh, these cool little cartoons, but there's the Terry Sawchuk, just a really, really cool set. Uh, one of my favorite sets. I just like the little emblems on the back of it. So that would be number seven. Number six would be the 1933-34 OPG V-Series uh, set. I absolutely love the set. It's one of my favorites. The cards are green, the cards are blue, the cards are red. Really, really, really cool set. Uh, the key cards would probably be the Harry Morenz, the Eddie Shore, the Charlie Conacher, King Clancy, and Nils, uh, Neil Stewart. Uh, there are some really, really valuable cards in the set. It's one of my favorite sets. I wish I could complete the set. Obviously, I can't. I had some opportunities to buy uh, it's really hard to find these because it's from 1933, but here is in fact the Howie Morenz. Uh, I think I paid $65 for this card, uh, but a mint nine, and it's almost ripped in two, a mint nine of this would be, I think 11,000 bucks or something to that effect. The Eddie Shore rookie cards in here, and that's like 8,000 uh, bucks. There's the Dick Clapper, the Harry Oliver, the Red Horner is a rookie card. Really, really cool. George Hainsworth is in this set. Uh, but really it's all about the Howard Morenz. It's probably the best one, along with the King Clancy uh, Hall of Fame card. Charlie Conacher's rookie cards in here. Uh, Ching Johnson, uh, Armand Mondou, you remember him with the Canadian. So there's all kinds of really cool ones. It's just one of the cool sets ever, uh, 1933. Can you imagine that? So I'm doing, I guess, up to 6162 because I just showed 6162. So next break, I'll do above the 62 or whatever. But this is one of my favorite. At number five, I have a tie between the Tops and the Parkers again of 6061. 6061 Tops is probably my favorite, one of my favorite all time of all sets. Uh, it was hard to, how to sort of um, where to place it because I could easily put it number one just because it looks so cool. It has the Lester Patrick, which is amazing. Uh, so it has all of these old school guys. Really, really beautiful set. Uh, more than anything, the Stan Makita is his rookie card, so keep in mind that. But one of the coolest cards that you have here, beyond, you have the George Vizina, which is unbelievable. And notice that the Haps have blue jerseys because the colors are inverted because they didn't own the rights. And it does have a Howie Morans, which makes it so special. I think the most valuable card is probably the Stan Makita, so I'd say a graded nine is a $3,000 card. Uh, all those, I'm just going based off, as I said, the most recent PSA guidance, although it's probably worth more at, on auction, but just a wicked, wicked, wicked set. Uh, beyond the Stan Makita, I'm, I'm just trying to think who would be valuable. Uh, probably Howie Moran's card would be the most valuable. It's like a $2,000 card, uh, mint nine, if not more. So here's the 6061 Parkhurst. Uh, again, this would be the first year, I think, when they introduced both the American and Canadian teams in one complete set, which is really cool. Uh, notable people within this would probably be the Gordie Howe, the Morris Richard, last year Morris Richard, Jack Plant, uh, Tim Horton, and Terry Sawchuk. I'd say the Gordie Howe's probably the most valuable along with the Morris Richard, probably $1,200 cards. No real notable rookies within this one, but it does have a Terry Sawchuk. It does have this the famous Richard, last Richard looking a little bit more portly. Uh, there's the uh, Jack Plant. Yes, very, very cool. All the big boys, there's Jean Beliveau. Number four. Number four is one of the most famous sets in the hobby. It's 55, 56, Parkers. It is Jack Knott's rookie year. So his rookie card, a mint eight, I think is valued at some $15,000. I have two of them, uh, pretty beat up. My actual set, this is sort of a duplicate sort of beat up set. I have a really good set of it, but it is not with me. It's in New York, actually. I have stuff in storage. Uh, but it's so cool. It has a Bill Dernan. The key ones are, of course, the Jacques Pantomau, the Richard, the Jean Beliveau, uh, the Maple Leaf Gardens, and the Montreal Forum, because I think those cards are valuable because in good condition, they've been thrown out. Uh, so the ones that exist are probably in pretty poor condition, unfortunately. Uh, but a really, really cool set nonetheless. And again, the most valuable cards certainly would be the Jacques Pant, the Jean Beliveau. I think the Mint 8, near Mint 8, is valued at 800 plus. 
just to give you an idea, some really, really cool cards within the set. Not, not really all about the rookies in this other than the Jacques Plant rookie, but what a beautiful set. Of course, I own the Maurice Richard, I own the entire, in this entire set. All right, number three is 5253. Parker. So in front of me here, I have 5354. Unfortunately, 5253, I have it a box. It's in storage. It's not here, but I do own that set. It is a beautiful set. It includes the Tim Horton rookie card, which is probably valued at about, I don't know, 6,000, 7,000 bucks, something to that effect. The Gordie Howe second year card. They're considered second year cards, even though he started in the 40s, as we all know, but his first year was the year prior of the Parkers. Uh, I think that Gordie Howe is probably the most expensive card set. It's probably a $12,000 card. Uh, considered mint nine, something to that effect. There's a Morris Richard, uh, there's a Terry Sawchuck, there's a Dickie Moore, there's a Doug Harvey, and they're minis. All these cards are minis, and there's, they're beautiful cards. Uh, some of my favorite, favorite cards in the hobby. And there is a Jerry McNeil, who was the Habs goalie at the time, who I met later in life. Uh, in terms of rookie cards, of course the Tim Hortons, but also the George Armstrong, and a couple of others, I believe. But just a beautiful set of minis. Number two. Number two would be the Pollens Candy 1923-1924, I believe, uh, which is a V-series uh, mini uh, card. A lot of them were stamped. They were stamped and clipped because there was a redemption program for them. Beautiful set of cards, including the New Zealand Land, including a George Hainsworth rookie card, uh, Red Dutton, Joe Simpson, Bill Cook, some really important cards within that. Uh, most of the cards in the mid nine are valued at about $2,000. I think the Red Dutton is considered a $4,000 card. Uh, but of course, the James, George Hainsworth rookie card, one of my favorite cards of all time, $10,000 a mint nine. You know, again, I don't know what the market is now, but that's basically what PSA says. Uh, unfortunately, like in all of these, most of the really good cards are the rookie cards I've actually stored somewhere else because I have them in top loaders. But this set is just such a cool set. Uh, there's a Barney Stanley rookie card, uh, a bunch of other really cool cards. There's actually a Dick Irvin Sr. Uh, in the Pauline's Candy, and it would be his rookie card, and that's like a $4,000 card. So just to give you an idea of how cool that set was, there was actually a Jack used too, unrelated, I assume. All right, guys, and number one, number one, number one, number one would be 1937-38 OPG. What, really, yeah? Well, I love them because they're so cool, Art Deco. At the time when I bought these, so no, by the way, guys, I. Bought a lot of these sets when I initially started collecting for just $50 here, $100 there, a couple hundred dollars maximum, and got cards in terrible, terrible con condition. Later on, I replaced some of them with really nice sets. Uh, these are just the binders I have in Montreal that are be beaten and battered. I know this set, I only have these. I don't have all of them, but I do have quite a few of them. Uh, and I believe I paid about $12 a card at the time. The key thing about 3738 is just how cool Art Deco they are. They have blue ones, they have purple ones. Uh, the key cards would have been the Tobe Blake, the Turk Broda, the Aurel Joliet, the Charlie Conacher, who you see right here, uh, as well as the Sill Apps, right? So those would have been the key cards within the set. Probably the most important one would be the Tobe Blake, which is like a $7,000 card as a mid nine. Uh, the Gordy Dillon, which is a rookie card as well, was a $3,000 card, I think, mint nine. The Turk Broda would maybe also be one of the most sought after ones. I think that's basically a, a $4,000 card. Now, how do I get a hold of these things and why do I have such crappy ones? When I started getting back into collecting, I decided to not invest much, but to just be tied to a piece of history by bu buying PSA 1 ungraded cards for a quarter of the price of what they're listed at or were listed at, at the time. So if a PSA one of one of these cards was listed at $50, I would buy the card for $12. So I ensured that I got a bunch of PSA ones. I do have PSA twos, PSA threes and so on. Uh, but that's just how I got back into collecting and I have updated some of these sets which are some really, really nice sets, but I've tried to keep it down because I just like having these cards. When I do my future uh, top 10 list going beyond 62 and getting into 70s and 80s, you'll see the condition gets a lot better, obviously. So I'll probably the, do the next, I'll do the 60s and 70s or 70s and 80s and then above and beyond that, I'll do my sets from more recently. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I thought I would just give you a bit of a top 10 of sets, as it turns out, from 61, 62 or before. Uh, as I said, I have all of these sets, or lots of these sets, in a varying condition, and some of which I have updated with nicer sets, but these are sort of the ones I have with me here. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. 
Uh, let me know what is your favorite set from prior to, let's say, 6061 uh, in terms of these old school sets. So I was just going by what I did have uh, in one of my bins. So that'll be Full Cars, live and direct from a place called Montreal, Quebec. And after all.